Is sorry biblical? That's a serious question. People want to say sorry at every given time when they feel they've offended someone. There's some other people who, who insist on being told sorry at the slightest offense. So my question now is, this sorry we always keep saying, is it even biblical? Is sorry biblical? Mm. In other words, is it is it sanctioned? Okay, scripturally, is it something we can we find relevance? Can we find um, any any form of instruction or practice in scripture? That's what you mean by when you say something biblical. So please don't <laughs> for people for, for people of people of God who read scriptures um, not to. Not to fellowship with God, not to know more about God, but to look for, you know, errors and to look for um, loopholes. Please, huh? So, when they say something biblical, it's not, they're not saying, okay, because it's because it's in scripture, then we must do it. Or because it is written in scripture, because someone did it in scripture, then we must do it. That's not biblical. I'm saying this to people like you because. Um, usually end up with such information. They usually go to Bible and they, they read stuff like that. Actually, you can't you can't get the best out of scriptures if you don't read with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's another issue uh, not for another day. Okay, so when you say something biblical, it means that there is evidence of practice or evidence of instruction in scripture. And it is always it's always best okay, that you find in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, necessarily in the New Testament. Okay, necessarily in the New Testament. In other words, whatever it is you want to practice and you want to confirm with the scripture, you must confirm that someone in the New Testament did it and it was approved by God. Or it is an instruction. Okay, that's why. You see a lot of um, a lot of things that are written in, in the New Testament, especially in the epistles. Well, the epistles are the New Testament. <clears throat> Acts from Acts chapter two down. That's the New Testament. The Gospels are just um, narrations of the life of Christ. They're not necessarily the New Testament. The New Testament, the New Testament started when <coughs> Christ died. Sorry, after after the death of the Testament. Okay, so. Um, most of the time, those episodes were not, they didn't use parables, they hardly used parables, hardly. Very rarely they used parables or illustrations or analogies, they were just strict, as in Paul, Peter, James, John, oh, they were all straightforward, they were all like, yeah, this is it, as in no extra pepper and salt, no description, because descriptions don't do justice, honestly. Even Jesus, with the best of his parables, if you break down those parables, you find out that they, they, they are also lacking in describing God in its in his perfect state. But he said that he was using it because their minds were hard. They couldn't handle the raw truth. They couldn't handle the raw answer. So he was giving them certain analogies to help them get there. You understand? They didn't, have, they, they didn't have the spirit of God in the Old Testament. Jesus operated under the Old Covenant. And they didn't have the spirit of God, the Messiah, in them. So he was using analogies, and even the disciples were confused. The apostles were, you know, they were sometimes they were dumbfounded. They were like, after the one meets Jesus after and asked, what, what are you saying? What, what are you saying? All right, is it was after the death of Jesus that you know the church started praying and they started getting baptized with the Spirit, and the, the the eyes of the understanding began to, you know, get enlightened. They began to open up. They began to understand these things, and they didn't need to. Communicating power with anyone, they just need to declare the word of God, to declare his ways. Alright? 
So, sorry, is it biblical? Is there a sanctioned instruction? Instruction. <laughs> is there an instruction in scriptures? Honestly, I, I don't know. If you have any, if you know, if you know of any, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to burn your time. Just keep going around. I don't know of any. I don't know. Of any. I'm honestly telling you the truth. I, I feel I feel sorry is something that we created, man created, you know, like 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 feminism, okay, like democracy. These are things that man created, and they are nice. Okay, they are not evil. They are, they are natural. They are natural activities of men, natural ideas of men. Adoption, you know, blood transfusion, you know, all these things. These are things that men created. Man created in an effort to live on this world. Well, um, hoping that they were in line with God. Okay? Hoping that they were in line with the Creator of the world. Okay, they were not. They were not created necessarily in Abraham or, or, or in or in sorry, in opposition with God. Okay, we didn't create democracy to, to offend God. No? We didn't. Um, didn't what what now we didn't um, create adoption to offend god no this, uh, we didn't create slavery to offend god we didn't create um, uh, what now capitalism to offend god these are things that were created you know established by men in order to live on this earth considering that the devil was running the earth basically and so the earth was flawed the earth was no more under the relationship of man the earth was flawed okay so our ideas were always flawed. They were always flawed in every way. Sorry is one of them. Sorry is an appeal to the emotion, an appeal to um, the emotional of the emotional um, person, the emotion of the emotions of a person, especially the person that has been offended. Okay, that's I'm saying sorry based on the fact that you are saying sorry to someone you have offended. Not sorry, oh I'm sorry you're not feeling fine. That's a different thing. That's that's a different expression. So that's some people don't even like that expression. Do you make me fall sick? Why are you, why are you sorry for something? Oh, I'm sorry you had an accident. That's a different thing. See, sorry in the sense that I offended you, I hurt you, and I'm sorry I did this. Okay, so sorry is not necessarily. I don't think it is scriptural. Sorry, if you break the law, you break the law. Sorry does not. If sorry, if sorry was a valid scriptural practice, Adam. We would be in this mess right now. Adam would have dealt with this man. Adam would have simply said, I'm sorry. But even back then, it was not the practice. It was not, a, it was not part of the vocabulary of God. So throughout the time God would come down to the cool of day and come in and you know fellowship with them. There was no use of the word sorry. There was it was simple. Do this, don't do this. If you do this, you are fine. If you don't do this, you understand. If you break the law, you you suffer the consequences. It's not the issue of oh I man, I say maybe I told you sorry now, I told you sorry. It's not it's not um, it's not it's not part of it was not part of the vocabulary. In fact, it is still not part of the vocabulary of heaven. If it was part of the vocabulary of heaven, trust me, God would have had to send Jesus down to do all that. No, you understand? Satan, in fact, Satan would have been kicked off from heaven. Satan would have. After get struggling with the Jamaica and realizing that he couldn't win this thing, he would have simply said, Oh, I'm sorry, let me stay back. And God will say, Oh, out of my mercy, I'm forgiving you. No, God doesn't need your sorry to forgive you. God understands the order He has set the world in. Alright? You understand the order He has set the world in. And He's He's He's, he's holding on to that order without regarding uh, uh, emotion. Without all oh, He's not He's not He didn't use the world on the emotions of men. He built it on principles in the spirit. Spiritual principles built this earth. Okay? One of them is sp- spoken word. Another one is faith. Right? These are elements of the spirit. Faith, um, and word of God. I believe music too is another element of the spirit. Music is just like the same way um, soil. Okay? So the earth, fire, wind, water. These are all elements of the natural. Okay? So uh, there are certain principles that, that are the foundation that the earth that the world rests on okay. these principles are valid they cannot be overlooked they can, you cannot be oversight from those principles so saying sorry does not nullify these principles it, 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 you have you have failed in that regard <laughs> saying sorry does not nullify these principles thinking that if you apologize no no apology does not help the solution 
So if a psychologist doesn't visit you, what 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 helps the situation? We will look at that. It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing that people need to learn. And sometimes because I have learned this thing and I have so imbibed it, it makes me look like I'm I'm merciless when I when I don't respond to apologies. And I don't respond. No one said I don't. I respond to apologies, but when I don't respond, um, the way people want me to respond to the apologies. Right? Uh, apologies are not the solution to the world. Apologies are not. All right. You, know, you get caught in traffic by by law enforcement. We are breaking traffic laws, and they hold us down to tell us you're going to pay this fine. Go to do this. And I say, oh, please now, please now. I'm very sorry. Now. When you say please now, please now, it begins to lead to give me bribe so that I can let you go. Because they're giving people power, power that they shouldn't have. Please now, please now, for what? You shouldn't be asking please for anything. That is not. You understand? You're putting yourself in a place where you I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, I didn't know, I'm very sorry for passing, for reversing at the roundabout. I'm very. <laughs> I'm very Nigeria, is very, but Nigeria is a very wonderful country. You know, somebody's reversing at the roundabout, you know that they are the wonderful country. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it does not sound good. Well. If you begin to go down in detail, I, I, I don't know if I should do that, I don't know if I will do that today. Go down in detail on how, 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 what happened in the Garden of Eden that led to the separation of man from God. Okay, that was basically the death, the death that God said he would surely die. Right? It was not a physical death of losing their breath. It was a death, it was a separation of the spirit. Their spirit was separated from God. Okay, and, and they didn't understand. They didn't understand this. They didn't understand. They thought it was a, because the devil told them you will not surely die. They were expecting a physical termination of life. No, a cessation of, uh, of, of the physical life of their breath. No, the stopping of their heart. No. But what God was saying, you will be separated from me. And that was when God showed up at the cool of the day. And Adam and Eve were hiding. He said, Where are you? He was not asking for their geographical location, he was asking for their spiritual connection, their spiritual connection with him. They were, they were disconnected from him. And he said, Where are you? You think God didn't know where Adam and Eve? Seriously, God, you mean present, you mean the omniscient God, God who knows everything, wherever it is, whatever it is, however it is, he knows. He knew. Ah, he's the God, he's the, he's the one of the God. He knew where they were, but he was asking them about their spiritual condition where are you okay that separation is there okay and and if the, the if sorry was the situation or the solution to the problem he wouldn't have separated them he would have caused them caused the land for their sake caused this, this serpent he would have done all that right look through the scripture sorry does not solve problem you if you look through let's be honest if you look through the old testament the old testament is one of the bloodiest books ever written sometimes i feel like new testament um, um, uh, all I call it new new converts should not reduce the element until they have adequately consumed the book of John, consumed the lives of Ephesians, consumed the, the New Testament. Then you can now look at the shadows, okay? Because most of us we introduced the shadows and we thought that was God. I, I had the keyboard this one time, I think I've said this before. Generally, I'll be, I, a lot of the studies I'll be saying, I've said this, I've said it before, somewhere maybe in the past, in some episode of the podcast or somewhere. Not that old, so I don't really have so much stories, so many stories to tell. <laughs> so we, I'll be repeating a lot of my stories. I'll be repeating them. The truth is, the truth is, um, um, what was I saying now? I think I was referring to, um, I think I was referring to which story was I? Okay, yeah, I was saying my keyboard, my keyboard was saying something, and he was talking about, um, the he was he posted on social media, and I was like, oh, my former keyboard is not my current keyboard. It's, we were, we were saying, oh, that we um, want to understand the, we want to know and understand the nature of God, the person of God, the behavior of God. And you should look at the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the Old Testament you know, we do, and I, I, I don't know what he saw. I don't know who told him that. Maybe it was a pastor. Maybe it was, he was the one who just felt like he saw something. Like that. Ah, this was going to really captures God. And I had to clear him immediately because normally, normally, my kind of person, because I'm already a lecturer, so I, 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 I try, if I'm not if I'm not behind the podium, if I'm not in front of my class, I don't give advice. I try, I try my best not to give advice. The only people I give advice, unsolicited, unsolicited advice, is my, my friends. Those are the people I give my advice. Generally, I try to avoid it because 
Uh, it's so, I, I'm not that kind of person. I avoid it. If I can see you, I can see you barreling down the wrong path into destruction. And I will not tell you. I will just look at you and say, yeah, belly. Fully you need. And I will just look at you. But I said my close friend. So I had to that situation because he was my keyboard designer. I had to have to tell him, no, 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 no. The Old Testament does not give you a good perspective of God. It gives you a shadow. Okay, it gives you a shadow. Okay, a shadow perspective. In other words, what you're seeing is the shadow of the person. You're not seeing the real image of the person. You're not seeing maybe oh, oh, the silhouette or the type, a type, an expression, an analogy. Okay, you're not seeing the real, the real, 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 real expression of God. Look at Jesus. Jesus said it. If you look at me, if you see me, you have seen my father. Outside me, you have seen nothing else. If that was why. God told the Israelites, do not make a graven image in my place. Do not make an image to represent me. Why? I will send my son. He will represent me where? Until then, don't make any image. You don't have any idea what I look like or who I am. If you do that, I cannot inhabit whatever you have made. I cannot inhabit that which you have made with your hands. I made you. How can I now inhabit that which you have made without my permission, without my instruction? You are making something and calling it a representation of the God that brought us out of Egypt. If you do that and I cannot inhabit those things, the devil will inhabit those things and then run your life. And that was what the devil did. <clears throat> the devil showed up as Baal. The devil showed up as Baal and was consuming children. If you know the things that were happening, in fact, a lot of the killings that happened in the Old Testament, where God would say, Oh, go and destroy this country, go and do this, go and wipe everything. What he was doing was cleansing. A lot of those communities, those countries were involved in abortion, in killing babies, in eating babies in sexual perversion and they were worshiping certain gods because they were being religious they wanted to worship the unknown god the god they didn't know and so they created certain images and because god cannot inhabit those images devil just took over and was running their lives and god said don't make those things but then israelites will make those things okay or deviate from the path of god and God will, even if God does not react, life itself will just show up. A lot of the things that were happening in those Testament, it was not really God that was doing them. A lot of the, the life, when you, when you break the law, when you break the law of which, on, on, the laws on which this world was created, the world, the universe, the, this world will, will work against you. Yeah, it's established. A lot of the, the laws of nature exist. God did not just... God is not running the world every day. God is not, it's not like God is coming for a day job. Every day he will come and put on the world and the world will run. And after the day is over, he will come switch off the world and go and sleep and come back the next day. No. The world is on autopilot. Why? Because he has set the foundations upon which the world runs. Once you break those laws, you break those principles, the world itself will work against you. So a lot of times you have the digitalized will be they will die, they will commit sin, they will commit sexual sin. And they will die in thousands. They will break certain laws. They will die in battle. They will do this. And God will tell them, don't do this, don't do this. When God says, don't do certain things, it's not because he wants to. It's not because if you do them, he will die. It's not because if you do them, he will fall sick. God is not affected by your sin or your righteousness. He is God all by himself. So when he tells you, don't do this, it's because he wants you to be in alignment with the world he has created. He created this world on certain principles. The moment you step away from those principles, the world will work against you. So he's saying, walk in this path. Why? Once you walk in this path, you are in alignment with all I've created, and all I've created will favor you. Once you leave the path, you have to now work for yourself. You have to hustle for yourself. You have to now sell yourself to the devil. You have to now cut corners, do certain illegal things, certain unrighteous things, so that you can get ahead in life. If not, the world will strangle you. And the only reason why you can get away, you can get away with that is because the devil runs the world. If God, if God, if God, if the world was still in the hand of man, the way God had planned, when he gave Adam the world and tell him to dominate it, to take dominion, inhabit it, to replenish it, then you won't have any corners to cut. You won't, have, you won't be able to turn anywhere. You understand? You, you, have, to, you have to align with, with the process of God. But because the world has been handed to the devil, you can now break certain laws and do certain things and get ahead and then be in the hand of the devil to use. Why? Because they are submitting to his will. 
you don't know the answer the devil showed up in the dream and told you oh bow down to me now no the fact that you have yielded your members as your body to sin means that you have left the relationship of god and now you have submitted yourself to the devil so while you think you are making money and you're getting hide in life the devil is using you to get some things done without even without your knowledge he's using you to get things done and then Israelites will realize, oh, we've done this thing, we've done this thing. And they will have to carry out certain rituals, certain uh, practices, certain things to rectify the error. They won't just say, oh, I'm sorry, oh, we are sorry, oh Lord, we are sorry, oh Lord. Oh, take, oh, sorry, 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 take sorry. Take some more sorry. Are you, are you, are you satisfied with the sorry? Do you need more sorry? Take more sorry, oh Lord. And God will say, okay, yes, my blood has come down now. Yes, it's all over. Okay, I'm good. Okay, now let's let's turn back. To no, certain things will have to be done. Certain actions will have to be carried out to rectify man's stand with with the world, not even with God. Now, as in, God is not even saying it's me. God is saying even I am subject to my word. My word has been released to to create this world. So even I myself am subject to my word. Okay, that was why Jesus had to come to die. All that God had to show up on earth as Jesus to die. Not because Jesus was looking, not because, not because Jesus was feeling like, you know, I'm uh, feeling like I feel like that today. But what do we do today? Hmm, let's see. Let's die today. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus had better things to do with his life than die. Alright, but God showed up on earth as Jesus. If you read John, if you read the book of John, you understand what I'm saying. I mean, John is a powerful book. John is everybody I've listened to who says, What book should we read in the New Testament? Everybody, in fact, I just listened to a pastor today and the same thing. Somebody asked him, he was on, he was on YouTube live. Someone sent a comment and said, Oh, Pastor, what, uh, what, do, what, what book do you recommend that we read in the New Testament? The guy should, as he, before he was, I just, I just said it, John. <laughs> the guy said, John. Everybody says, John. John is an awesome writer. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling I'm tell you the truth. John. Oh my goodness, John! If 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 it was a competition, John beat Matthew Mark and Luke hands down. He beat them hands down. All right, with the, with the things he said, and he was and he, 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 he didn't really say that much. He was focused on the theme of his even even whether it is the, the the gospels of Jesus or the epistles he wrote to the church. They were all centered on love. I'm telling you, they were all centered on love as the drive behind. Jesus, and he was looking at Jesus not as a man, he was looking at Jesus as a human representation of God, as a human embodiment of divinity. He considered Jesus as the point where divinity meets humanity. That's why we always recommend John because it gives you a good perspective of who Jesus is. So Jesus showed up. Why? Because sorry was not the solution. That's why Jesus showed up. Because sorry, well, if sorry was the Jesus will not have to show up. Jesus showed up because man had to pay for his mess. Man had to pay for his mess. Man was separated from God. But God wanted a relationship with man. So he had to re-establish a relationship. And what did he do? He came in the form of Jesus to rectify that separation. Sorry was not the solution to the problem. So after in doing that, he has reconnected man with God. And it is an, it's, it's such an amazing thing because even the angels are constantly flabbergasted by how simple that process was. Even the devil, even, even, even the saints of old, the Elijah, the Moses, they don't understand how it is that we are living in such, in such an awesome life, such an awesome lifestyle, such an... <laughs> such, in such a relationship with God without any effort. You, do you know what it means to live in the Jewish? Oh my goodness. Oh, I think I think I think I think you need to spend time being a Jew. Like not like these new new Jews of you nowadays that they don't they don't kill animals, they don't do I, I need to ask one of these Jews how they do it because I don't see them killing animals, I don't see them atoning for their sins the way they did it back then. Back then, <laughs> you want to commit sin, you look at your bank account. <laughs> you want to sin, look at your bank account and say, Come, 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 come. Do I have the, the, financial, <laughs> the financial ability 
to continue in this sin <laughs> because you need to pay for those sins you need to kill animals kill food, bring burnt offering bring seed offering bring uh, uh, peace offering sin offering all the offerings bring all of them to rectify whatever sin you committed that, today that's what they see with the catholic church the catholic church still does it if you commit sin during the week to, to, to generally define how much you give on sunday so we will give offerings as a function of their sins you if they've seen so much they give a lot of offering to call out that is that's why I, do, I, I still think catholicism is catholicism okay it's a religion and it's, it's christianity is not a religion there's a major difference between christianity and catholicism uh, it's, it's, a, it's a major religion catholicism is is, is more similar to buddhism and islam and you know the other ones than they are close to in fact the only thing connecting capitalism and christianity is jesus if you remove jesus from the picture we are very different people i don't even go let's not go into that let's not go into that <laughs> so so sorry is not the solution i tell you that you are sorry that no even god understands that that's why he had to pay the price it was the theory that said it that the covenant we had we couldn't keep ours. We couldn't keep our covenant. We didn't keep our part of the covenant. So God had to show up to help us keep. He, he kept his own part. Then he came over and helped us keep our own part. Do, do you do you understand? Do you understand? I mean, if you if, if you look at was it was it we are in Galatians um, Galatians uh, three I think Galatians three thirteen. Where they say the cost, the 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 cost of the law has been broken. And the cost has been broken okay, because Christ hung on, hung on the tree, and the law says that cost is any man who hangs on the tree. So the cost has been broken. So therefore, the covenant that we were under, the covenant that was binding us, the covenant that said that we have failed the covenant, and therefore we should be slaughtered, we should be killed, we should be eliminated. Okay, that covenant, uh, okay, has been rectified. And therefore, the benefits attached to the covenant are ours, not based on covenant terms, but based on promise. So, when we read the Bible, we are reading God's promises to us, not our covenant with God. Okay, we cannot keep covenant with God. We cannot. We we have failed so many times. This is what we are done. It's all over. Let's not fool ourselves. However, we can reap the promises. Why? Because Jesus has helped us keep the commandment. He has helped us keep the covenant. So since he has kept the covenant for us, we can now um, reap the benefits, the, pro- the benefits of the covenant, the, the, the output of the covenant, the, 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 the flows from the covenant, okay, that which the covenant gives because of, you know, that which the covenant gives those who maintain the terms of the covenant, alright, so it's like, oh, we, we are reaping where we do, it's like we are reaping where we did not sow, we are benefiting things that we did not work for, right, because Jesus showed up. Alright, Jesus is not serious. Just say sorry. You say sorry, God will forgive you. You have to pay the prices. You have to pay the prices. It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a thing you want to tell people, especially children. Anything you want to tell people, but the truth is that life does not work with sorry. I wish it did. A lot of things will be, a lot of things will be able to scale through or scale or is it scaled by now? But life is not built like that. So don't live your life with the idea that you will say sorry and things will be done. No. Have it in mind that what you do have, has consequences. The things you will do have consequences. If not on your life, on the lives of other people. Don't just have the mind that you will just say sorry. You just offend you. I, I, I hate that in my mind. I hate oh my goodness. I hate it in my life. It, it, it pains me. Oh my goodness. It pains me. Maybe we we'll just do things with the idea that you will say, oh sorry. Or, or, or they do it with the idea that you know they do it and they, they they avoid you hoping that time will pass okay time will pass and after that time passes you'll be able to raise the matter because you know you've already forgotten it and everything has been there no it's, 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 it's bad it's evil that is evil that is what evil actually is because you you hurt people what you've done is you've hurt people and then you're walking around with the mindset that oh since time has gone by um, everything is okay no everything is not okay you don't do that to people especially people you say you love people you claim you love you don't do that what you do is you rectify your wrongs if you have hurt people 
settle those issues. I hurt you in Jesus' so way, please. I'm sorry. Man. Settle those issues. Don't go around thinking that, uh, or you just say, okay, um, let me keep offending this person. Oh, I, I, I want to do this. If I know that I have to offend this guy, I'll just tell him sorry. No, don't, don't do that. If you're going to do something, if that thing is so important for you to do, and you know it's going to hurt somebody, own it. Own it. Say, it, I did this thing. I knew it wouldn't hurt you, but it was important that I did this thing. Please. Okay? Don't be annoyed if you can, if you can, if you can, if you can overlook it, I really appreciate it. But I knew it was going to hurt you. I knew this, but it was important for me. Own these things. Don't just do things and say, okay, I'll hurt this person, but I'll tell him sorry. No, that is evil. You don't do stuff like that. You don't do stuff like that. What you do, all right, what you do is what I want to discuss now. The things you do to replace the offense you have, or let's say to, 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 to rectify, all right, in place of sorry, in place of saying just sorry, um, I did this thing, oh, I, I believe that if I tell you sorry, you are going to let go of this stuff, you're going to abandon this thing, it's not going to mean anything to you after a while, that, oh, this is a, it's a minor thing for you, after I'm your close friend, blah, 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 sorry, no, this is what you do, when you know you've offended somebody, even if you don't say anything, change. This is the one that is biblical. I have just given you the one that is what biblical. If you're not going to do anything, okay, if you're not going to do anything. If you're not going to say anything. Just change. People will appreciate it. Unless it's people that are narcissistic and they feel, oh, you must tell me sorry. I must hear sorry from your mouth. You must bend and bow to me in sorry. If you are dealing with somebody who is not narcissistic, they will appreciate the change. If it's a clear change, yeah, okay, um, I, I, I was drunk and I slapped you. <laughs> if I regret that action, even if I don't tell you sorry, I will stop drinking. I will stop and you will see me that I'm avoiding drink. You will offer me drink. I will say no. I'm, I don't drink anymore. I don't like the things I do when I drink. I will appreciate Anybody will appreciate it. They will appreciate I promise you they will appreciate it. This is what is biblical. When God deal, God is saying, repent. That's what repent is. Change your mind. Change your orientation about stuff. Don't just say I'm sorry. I, this, 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 this is what I do to people who say this like I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ask them. If you had the opportunity to do this thing again, would you do it? That's when you pin people down and you realize that they've been just giving you lip service. There's a you just meet. And you, if you if you had the opportunity to do this thing again, if the situation showed up again in the future, would you do it? So some of these things they will do it. They will do it. They because most of the time. There, there, there are there are things that are mistakes. There are mistakes. There are, there are things that are mistakes that okay, I brushed your car. Um I I I I, I stepped on your foot on your foot, I broke your china, I, I smashed your windows. These are mistakes. Okay? Then there are bad decisions. Mistakes are not bad decisions, they are two different things. Mistakes are things that you did without knowing, without knowing the repercussions. Without knowing that it will hurt people. Or you or you didn't even know you did them. These are things you did or you didn't know you did them. Like you did something when you were drunk. You didn't know you did them. Your inhibitions were were whack. As in you didn't, your mind was not working well. That's a mistake. When you make bad decisions, it means that you have considered the you have considered the consequences, the outcomes, the consequences, the, the people that were affected by it, and you decided that I will do this thing. You said I will do this thing. You looked at war, you looked at all the possible outcomes and said, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to this. So if that is if you have made a bad decision, that is not the situation you say sorry. You can make you can say sorry with a mistake, and even the person that will believe you, okay, yeah, you didn't mean it. Unless the person unless you have you've had the previous beef with the person, the person say no, you deliberately no. But if it's you know, if it's a mature person and they see a mistake and they say sorry, they say look, oh, no, you can't do them thing. You understand? But if it's a it bad decision, these people make and they, they, you sleep, you, you cheat on your your partner, your spouse. That's a bad decision. That's not a mistake. You didn't trip and fall and somehow copulate with the other gender. 
and then maybe there's a baby involved and you say it's a mistake that baby is not a mistake it's a bad decision it's not a mistake no child is a mistake it is a it is a wrong decision that made that was made in that situation what do you do you don't say i'm sorry because you are not sorry you are not you just especially when it's when you get to you when you have been caught that is another horrible part when you did something wrong and you were actually caught you, in other words you didn't say sorry you didn't apologize you didn't confess what you did you know you did not caught you and then i say oh i'm sorry I, 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 yeah, i'm sorry I, please believe me i'm sorry. no we can't believe you even you don't believe yourself <laughs> you yourself you don't believe yourself so why should i why should we believe you you're caught you are, you are just being guilty you're just having this guilt in your heart <clears throat> so the question is what do we do i've said it repent just change your mind change trust me my kind of person Hmm? Why this principle is important to me is because I it helps me forgive people before they offend me. Yeah, I believe forgiveness. Forgive the word forgive. I, I I see the word forgive as giving giving pardon before offense. That's what forgive means to me. You give pardon before offense. You are forgiving the person. For me, that's what I, that's what I see it as give pardon before offense all right so before the person has even offended me just there are people in my life that i have already i've already zeroed in my mind that this person no matter what you do i forgot forgiving you no matter what you do as in, the person has not, has not offended me but i already zeroed in my mind that i cannot i will not hold on to your offense i will forgive you so it helps me that even if the person does not know that they've offended me a lot of my friends offend me and they don't even know they crack jokes i mean they, they mock me or they do certain, certain things and they don't even know <clears throat> but I've already forgiven them why? because I know that why is that important? you will get, you will meet people that will not say I'm sorry what do you not do? do you not say you will not forgive? you are, you are, you are, you are already fighting against God <laughs> at that point you, know, you, are fighting, you are no more fighting against man you are fighting against God because God requires you to forgive I mean, there are places in the Bible where God, even even Jesus, had to tie tie forgiveness to your blessings. He, tie, he said, if you have faith like a monster, if you have faith like nothing, yeah, if, 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 if you if you if you believe, if you de- make a declaration and you believe that you receive it, okay, the mountain that you have commanded to go into the sea will, you understand? And then he said, you must do that <laughs> with a clear heart. In other words, you must forgive people so that your Father can forgive you. He said all those things. He tied. He tied you the works of your faith to forgiveness. Uh-huh. So you see now, forgiveness is important. So you will struggle. I think that's I think that's Mark um, uh, Mark 11, 23, 24, I think 12 or so. I'm not sure. So you, you see, you see where you, you see that even God is saying that forgiveness is necessary. But he did not say sorry is necessary. God has, I don't think there's any point God saying sorry is necessary. Even when he said, when he said, you know, people shall call back, call, um, call, shall, um, call on my name, what did, what did, what did that verse again? I don't know how to memorize verses like that. If my people shall, if my people who are called my name shall humble themselves and seek my face, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will hear them and I will hear their life. He did not say, if my people come and say they are sorry, they, are, they apologize for all their sins and say sorry, sir, and they need them, prostrate and beg and roll on the floor. He didn't say any of that. He just said, if they call, if they, my people who call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Nothing there says, come and say sorry to me. God is not the sorry God. Even when he says, confess this one to another, he doesn't say, go and tell people sorry. He says, go and tell people the things you have, go and tell people that they have offended, the things you have offended them about. Don't go and be telling them sorry. <clears throat> tell them, I realize I've offended you in this way. I will do my best not to do it again because I know that it's wrong. It's, it's offended you. Sorry is not the Now I'm not saying sorry is bad. I'm not just take note. I'm not saying sorry is bad. I'm saying you need to stop using sorry as a holding sorry as a means to as a, as a as a ticket or as a license to offend people, as a license to hurt people. I hate this. See, I hate putting my place in a situation where I have to beg somebody. One, I hate putting in a situation where I have to say people sorry. I don't like it. I don't like hearing it. I don't like saying it. Now, if I hear it, I'll eat. If I hear, if I hear a genuine sorry, there's a way that it does me. I, I melt. No matter how angry I am, believe me, believe me. I 
I'm a big guy because I'm big. I smash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> I'm like Hulk smash. <laughs> just like, I'm I'm a big guy, so I, you don't want to see me angry. I'm not. It's not. People are not safe around me when I'm angry. But if if I hear a genuine sorry, that thing makes me like like oh my goodness. It's like it's like cutting cutting a brick of butter with hot knife. It just it just goes through me and melts faster than ice or hot water. I, it just I, that, that's if it's genuine. If it is that kind of story that they just tell you so that you can shut up and walk and shut up and keep quiet. Ah it will double the madness. <laughs> the madness will double. I don't know how it happens. It will just I I, I, I will just go blind with rage. Because you have told me that my my concerns are stupid so to just to chop me up, just tell me sorry so I can everything can continue. No. Rather than tell me sorry, you can tell me, I realize what I've done. I see that you, it's hurt you, you're not happy what happened. I will do my best not to do it again. You see, that's the thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with you. I'm good with you. Once I can see clearly evidence that you are doing, deliberately doing things to make sure that you don't do that again, I'm good. We are, I promise you, we are good. Don't show me evidence. In fact, you might not even tell me sorry. Just show me evidence that, ah, this guy is. We will be close friends. We will be tight friends. And, and that is how God works. God wants to see change. God is saying repent. Repent means change your mind. That's what repent. He say you know what God is saying. Repent now. Repent. That's simply what he's saying. John the Baptist does not say, come out and beg God. John the Baptist said, repent. <clears throat> John the Baptist said, repent. That was all baptism was. Baptism was simply saying, I have changed my mind. Not I am sorry. I have changed my mind. Sorry, I don't think so. Is like, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, if you, if you think it is, send me a message, send me a voice message on, 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 on whatever app, whatever podcast app you're using. Send me a message. Let me know. Send me if, if you want to send me an email. Send me an email. Big down at the Big down at the Or you hit me up on social media. I don't think sorry is a biblical concept. It's something we created, and we can't keep using. Like I said, it is man-made. It is not bad. It is not evil. Okay, it is man-made, but it's not evil. Okay, so people can use it. I use it. I've said sorry a lot of times to people. I've told people, sorry, no verse. As in, I know, I know, my as in, they didn't know what I did. I'm very sorry. But if it's not backed up by repentance, it is a waste. It is a waste of. It is. In fact, it's not just a waste. It's an insult to the person. I've basically insulted the person. Yeah, because I could have simply said. I could have simply said, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do it again. I don't even tell the person anything. I just, just, I just decide not to do it again. Than saying, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. And the person comes down. And in my mind, I know that I'm just saying sorry to, 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 come on now. Come on, come on, come on. Don't insult people. Don't hurt people. Then, then add insult to the whole injury. No. So, yeah. Sorry is not biblical. Sorry, I don't see it. I don't see where it is. People pay prices for the things they do. I don't like having, I don't like being in a situation. In fact, that is why I don't, I don't make rash decisions. I don't do. I can be spontaneous. I'm a very spontaneous person. I can be very spontaneous, but I don't do. I don't make drastic decisions. I don't act rashly. I don't. I don't. You will never see big down. I'm always calculated. I'm always calm, calculated. I don't jump at stuff. You don't. You don't. You don't. Run. Yeah, me, 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 me. I know. I will just start running. No, 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 no. Quite calm. In fact, I'm so calm sometimes my face, my face has changed. Blue. <laughs> they say I have resting bad guy face. <laughs> That's because I'm just trying to be calm. You understand? So when I want to, when when I'm when I'm very angry, when I'm mad, I consider the things I want to do because I am afraid of one thing, of doing stuff that will make me have to come back and say I'm sorry. I don't The fact that I'm gonna get angry and I will do this, I will say this, and and and, this, and one of the things that I'm, ash- I'm always ashamed of about my past is I have a very bad mouth. If I give you my mouth, you you you, you will consider suicide. I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not being hyper- uh, hyperbolic. You, will, if I use my mouth on you, if I follow you with my tongue, you will con- you will really consider suicide. If 
I want to get you. So, and I've stopped. I don't do that anymore. I've really stopped that. But when I'm angry and I want to vomit that thing, that's what I do. I tell myself, do you want to come and tell this person sorry? Do you want to be, do you want to owe this person is sorry? Do you want to, or do you want to have awkward conversations with this person in the future because you refuse to tell him sorry, you want to report him or her? I just go, just for just because I don't want to tell you sorry, I will not do this. I will rather walk away and you'll be like, oh, I hold this guy and this guy is not angry with me. He's not I'm angry with you. It's just that I don't want to say or do anything because I know that when I'm calm and Holy Spirit has flogged my bum bum and drawn my ear, he will send me back to you and I'll have to say sorry. And to, to put myself in a place where Holy Spirit will not tell me to say sorry to anybody, I would rather not do what I want to do in anger. He said I walk away and be calm down. Why? Why would I want to put myself in a place to say sorry to somebody? Why? Why is that something that people want to do? Why is that something that people want to do? To put, their place, they put themselves in a place where they have to tell God or they tell somebody sorry. No. Our job is to live before God and stand before men. Let's not, let's not take that, let's not turn that to an error. Where princes are walking and beggars are writing on horses. That's an error. That's an anomaly. That seems an anomaly. An anomaly when you are kneeling before men and standing before God. You kneel before God, and when you stand, before, when you reach, when you get to men, you stand before men, and they see the glory of God. You don't, you don't go around begging them, telling them sorry. And when you offend people, take the consequence and stop. Don't, 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 don't gaslight people. That's on that evil on the earth. Gaslighting people. That's 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 just. You can, in fact, you can't be a Christian if, you, if that's what you do. If you deliberately gaslight people, let me give you let me give you a trick. Let me give you a, a trick because these are the truth is the truth is right from when I was a young Christian, a, a teenager, when I was when I, I decided okay, I'm going to, I'm going to work with God. I told myself this truth. What was the truth? Matthew seven seven will be my. Is it Matthew seven seven? No, Matthew seven twelve. Yeah. The golden rule. Do want to order? You know, they say now the golden rule is. They say now the golden rule is. He who has the gold <laughs> makes the rules. <laughs> As Pastor Monty Ashim He who has the gold makes the rules. Well, back then, you know, I used to tell myself, do want to order what will happen to us. Not do want to order what, um, what they do, what they did to you. No, do want to order what you will have them, what you would want them to do to you. Okay, I that is that is where I work with people. I don't have any other principle. I'm not a principled man. You know those days, oh, I'm a principled man. Oh, oh. I'm, I don't, I don't do stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a very principled man. I don't do that myself. I'm not a principled man. There's only one principle in heaven and earth that guides the relationship between men. It is an among men. When I mean men, I mean people, man, mankind. Simple. Do want to others what you want them to do to you. Every other principle is based on the relationship between man and God. That's that's a vertical relationship. Those principles govern the vertical relationship between divinity and humanity. Or the relationship between man and man, okay? The relationship that exists between men or among mankind is one. Do unto others what you have done. That's, that's the only principle. Let's not let us say that's the only valid principle. You understand? So that I hold that, I hold that very well. I hold that very strongly. It's, it's like a foundational uh, orientation for me. You understand? So I do I don't understand it when people, people put themselves in situations where they are they are gaslighting someone. And so that principle, that principle now, this principle, what the office people want to share with you now, it works well. And it prevents all this unnecessary, I'm sorry, or gaslighting. Okay. So what's what's the principle? It's, it's simply um, how do I say this now? If, if someone accuses you, if someone accuses you of um, a, fa- a factual issue, if someone accuses you of something that is factual, something that has facts and figures, you can contend with it. You can contend with it. If you don't like it, if you don't believe it, if you don't think that that is true, that's what you believe. If it is not true, because these are facts, facts, facts don't need your belief. You don't need to believe facts. It's, it is either it or it is not it. So if someone says, "Oh, you always come late to work," that that is a factual issue. You go, simply go to the records and check. In the past one week, in the past one month, how how, how was my attendance been like? Have I been coming late or coming late? So if I have not been coming, 
if I've come more early than late, then definitely I don't always come late. You understand what I mean? Now? That's a factual issue. But this one says you are proud. That is not a factual issue. This one is contending. This one is challenging your character, your person, your values. That is not a factual issue. You don't contend with it. You and you don't necessarily accept it. You don't have to accept it. You can simply say, okay, um, I've heard what you said. Let me go and look into it. And let me, let me. I'll try to rectify it. I'll check if that is true. And I'll rectify it. That's simple. Trust me. That is humility. That is see this humility they are teaching. That is humility. When you just simply say, okay, I've heard what you said. Um, if what you say is true, I'll try. You say, oh, big time, you're proud. You just say, oh, I'm not proud. I'm not proud. You know, start quoting times when you're humble. And that, that's evidence that you are really proud. When you are trying to be humble, is you are really proud. People who are humble don't try to be humble. They are just humble. It's just. They just. <laughs> However, if you challenge them on their humility, you challenge them and say, oh, they are a proud person. The humility in them will make them check themselves and say, oh, Maybe I'm actually proud. Of. What did I do? Oh, what, what did I? What makes you think I'm proud? As in, they will start asking questions. What have I done? And they will not give instances. Oh, you did this. You did that. You did that. It's okay. Ah, I'm sorry. I will try and rectify it. When someone challenges characters that are not factual, there is no factual evidence. There, there are no numbers. There are no instances. Or they are not. They are not. You know, the person cannot really say exactly how many times you did that thing. How many times you've not done that thing. Don't contend with it because the person might be true. The person might actually be saying what they are seeing. They have not seen your entire life. They've only seen what they what they've seen, and they're making their own inference based on what they've seen. Don't contend with it. Last, last. Now, now, now nobody, nobody who spray perfume, they know where the perfume they reach. They, they, nobody person who spray perfume, they know where the scent of the perfume they reach. What I'm simply saying is, it's not the person who has um, um, worn body spray or worn a cologne that knows the extent to which that fragrance has gotten to, all right? The radius that that fragrance covers. So, is the radius you know, 5 feet? Is it 10 feet? Is it 50 feet? In other words, if you are walking to a room, is, do, do, you see that 50, you see that people around, people around me to the degree of 50 feet will be smelling the perfume or just five people, all right? It is people that will tell you, oh, I can smell you. Because somebody from the other room will tell you. Somebody from the other street, somebody from the other state will call you and say, man, did you just leave your house? I just smelled your perfume from the other state. <laughs> Those are the people that will tell you, oh, this is your character, this is your character. So, I mean, even Jesus, even though Jesus knew who he was, he still had to ask, who do men, who do men say I am? And he was not even asking about the character issue, he was asking about the spiritual issue. So he knew that he, was, he knew who he was, but he wanted to understand what do people think about me. So when somebody contends with soft stuff like that, be calm. Don't, don't, don't struggle with it. Don't contend with it. Don't challenge it and say, oh, you're wrong. No. When they says, oh, you are, you are, you are always uh, judging people. Don't struggle with it. Go and go. You go and do intro, uh, introspect. You see, introspect now. Check yourself. And you determine. And be honest with yourself. Holy Spirit will help you, help guide you. And tell you, oh no, the person is just trying to hurt you. The person is just trying to. The person doesn't have enough enough information to say that. Or the person is right. You actually need to. You actually need to check. You really need to check yourself. You understand stuff like that. So um, these are things that will help. I believe will help us live better lives, especially when it has to do with us, as in interacting with your fellow man. All right. So sorry is not. Uh, it's not like it. I don't see evidence in scripture. I don't see it. If you see, please tell me. Show me. Let me know. I I, I stand to be corrected. Is that what that is saying? I start to be corrected. <laughs> if you see evidence that shows that sorry is something that God has sanctioned, it's an expression, it's a, it's a practice. Tell him we're sorry. No. Is it a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. Okay. It only becomes bad when you use it as a tool to circumvent or to evade repentance. You don't want to change, you just want to tell people sorry. Alright, so I think I've done justice to that issue. Alright, God bless you. <laughs>
you can also get access to our videos on youtube salt tv and subscribe please subscribe to our channel do well to share this content around the world because this is how we spread the love of god honestly it will do us a lot of good follow us on social media facebook and instagram danny mcdon and the project salt and we really appreciate your following god loves you